Hello and welcome to my video on water testing. So I'm going to start this video off by talking about the pH and KH of the pond. So pH is acidity and alkaline and KH is carbon hardness. So what I do is I use the carbon hardness to stabilize the pH all the time. So I'm lucky, lucky enough to have the correct KH carbon hardness going from the tap water into this pond. Uh, for what I want. Uh, so my cage comes out of the tap at about 6 to 8 and uh, whereas I don't keep the pond at that level because I don't want the water to be alkaline because at 6 to 7 kh the water will be going on slightly alkaline around the 7.8 pH mark. So I want to keep my water less than 7.5 pH because I keep sturgeon, but I don't mind that for the koi as well in this size pond. Uh, we'll talk about that later. So what is the pH of this pond? Well I use this meter here to monitor the pH constantly and as you can see it currently says 7.06 pH and then the bit below that is 18.7 degrees. So this tells me what the pH is constantly and that for me is really handy because I want to know the pH and I never really need to know the KH. So I know the pH I want to be at which is 7.1. So what I do now is add some carbon hardener to the pond and I add this, I put in a bit and what this will do is it will bring up the pH and the more you put in, the more the pH will come up. But also, it's bringing up the carbon hardness. So, I know that the carbon hardness is going to be an acceptable level because of the level of the pH. And that's purely because um, that's how it works for me in this pond. And your pond may vary and you'll have different sort of results. So, with putting in that little bit of stuff, we should sort of see that 7.06 come up shortly. And I'll have a look at that in a minute. What I'll do is just put chuck, chuck another one in. So what I'm going to do now is go to my quarantine tank. Now I don't add carbon hardener to this pond because it has a high level of water trickling into it for the percentage volume of the pond. So as you can see, it is 7.97 pH. So you can see that 7.97 pH and 19.2 degrees. So why is this at 7.97? Well, it's got a higher carbon hardness because of the amount of water that comes from the tap water. That's why the carbon hardness is higher in this pond without me adding any carbon hardener. Now what are the advantages to having a higher carbon hardness level? Well, it makes your water pH more stable. You're less susceptible to, st uh, to pH crashes. Uh, and stuff like that. Higher levels of carbon hardness is better for blacks in fish, so fishes with blacks in them, well, the black will definitely look a lot deeper with a higher level of carbon hardness, but at the same time, high levels of carbon hardness reduces the red pigment, so the red can sort of become weaker with higher levels of carbon hardness, so it's best to find the balance for the fish that you have in your pond. But also, high levels of carbon hardness affect your filtration system. So if you've no fil if you've no carbon hardness in your filtration system, then what you're going to find is that the bacteria that breaks down the ammonia will not be created because they use the carbon hardness to create their skeleton and stuff like that. So it is important to have carbon hardener to be able to break down ammonia properly as well. And you'll find that different filtration systems use the different carbon hardness um, differently. So you might find that, for example, a plastic media uses a hell of a lot of carbon hardness and you've got to keep adding it like crazy. Whereas uh, a different type of media, like a ceramic media, might not use it as much and you might not have to add it. Uh, which is the case with the quarantine tank where I don't have to add it because it's sufficient what I get from the... Uh, so as we can see here look, it's going 7.09 now and it's working its way slowly up uh, because of that 
carbon armor that I've just added. So I'm going to start by looking at the ammonia level of the pond. Now I'm going to use one of these tetra pond tests as a guideline. Now you get these from a, any shop really, any koi shop will give you this, sort, this type of test with chemicals. Now I don't use them very often, I'll show you what I use shortly. Just using this as a demonstration. So now I've done that, what we do is be a bit patient and wait for the colour to change. But right off the bat, I'll come back to it in a minute, right off the bat you can see there is not zero in there. It's a bit lighter than zero but not quite 0.25. So yeah, I'd say that was pretty good water quality. But the problem is, is the accuracy of these tests. So really the test starts at 0.25 before you start to know anything and at 0.25 is a bit high for me so I'll show you what I actually do to test my pond again. So this is a Hanna meter and this is what I actually use to test the pond so what I do is I fill this little vial up to its required amount using syringe is cheating but it's so much easier these testers are quite good, they're quite accurate and they give you a really good result ludicrously expensive especially for what they are but there you go, it's one of the things so what I've done is I've just put that in there with nothing in it it's just a, just a bit of water in it and now you can see it says zero on the screen so I've just zeroed it so what I do now is I fill that up with uh, Regents. Oops. Now these are the regents that you use for uh, testing ammonia, an A and a B, and you put in four drops of each into here. So that's what I'm going to do now. Four drops of A. Oops. One, two, three, four. Then four drops of B. Come on. One, two, three, four. And then give it a quick shake. Clean it off again. Just cleaning it. Make sure there's no muck on it because it works by shining a light through the uh, tube to see what happens. So now what I do is I press the timer and wait for the timer to count down and then we'll see the output ideally I'd like this water quality to be below 0.1 it's not going to be that I'd like it to be below 0.3 in this test and that is because the fish have been spawning uh, yesterday morning so 0.3 which it is 0.3 <laughs> is what I actually expected it to be, that's quite, that's quite unbelievable that. Um, point 0.2 would be, I would ideally like it below point 0.2 uh, as a, so a constant any day at week sort of testing and below point 0.1 is what I would want if I've not been feeding them for a long period of time but for, for now point 0.3 is quite acceptable because of the spawning and uh, they're going to go through a period of lower food uh, and, uh, and that sort of thing and higher levels of filter cleaning which will bring the point 0.3 down to a more what I would consider acceptable level so that panometer is telling me that the water quality is point 0.3 so what we'll do now is now we've left the time a bit we'll have a look at this again and see if we can sort of guess what this is telling us <laughs> right now that is to me telling us that there's no milligrams per litre in that water to stand it up. Yeah, have a don't look at it. Change the light. Yeah, perhaps just over zero milligrams per litre. But obviously the next step down is 0.25. So you know. 
these tests are not very good. Whereas the anemeters test results, I actually can do trust. I do trust what this tells me. And it obviously gives me a more accurate reading. That's why I like the anemeter. Uh, because I like to stay... Point 0.3 is literally my worst case now. I don't think I've actually seen it that high in quite a while. Um, it only really gets that high when they're spawning. Uh, but usually I can actually predict now. And I don't use the anemeter quite as often. I can predict from what the fish are telling me what the ammonia level is. And... Uh, when I need to clean the filters and stuff like that. So there you go, that's ammonia. Um, also, another on the ammonia note, I know for a fact, and I might show you that, that the ammonia level in this quarantine tank is a lot higher. Now, why do I actually have a lot higher ammonia level in the quarantine tank? Well, that's because it's a smaller tank. But why do I also think it's more acceptable? Well, what you get with the smaller tank is the situation where the ammonia level fluctuates quite rapidly so in an afternoon this tank's ammonia level will be high because they've been fed all day and then they'll not get fed at night so it'll drop quite considerably again whereas when I've got the big pond which is 9,000 gallons of water the fluctuation in the ammonia level just doesn't happen it, take, it fluctuates over weeks, not hours, and not days. So it needs to be a lower persistent ammonia level. And also because of the pH level. So what I'll do now is I'll put on screen uh, an example of how the pH level can affect the ammonia. So, so here is a graph that shows the absolute maximum ammonia level that you can have in your pond before it starts to be permanently damaging to your fish. So across the top is the temperature of the pond and down the side is the pH and then all the results in the middle are milligrams per litre for ammonia. So circled in red is my main pond and the maximum of value that it can have is 3.17 milligrams per litre of ammonia. Now, if I actually got my main pond to 3.17 milligrams per litre, I would be having a massive problem due to the gallonage of the pond. Because if I change the waters uh, by 50%, it will not reduce the ammonia by 50%, for reasons I'm not going to get into quite now. But shown in blue is the quarantine tank's maximum value, and that is considerably less than the main pond due to the pH being higher. So this shows you that if I reduced my pH in the quarantine tank I would be even more acceptable to have an even higher level of ammonia but currently my ammonia level in the quarantine tank is 0.47 milligrams per litre so it's not yet a major issue but again the 0.47 will drop considerably in an afternoon and I'll show you that later uh, but there you go, that's the graph. I recommend that you have a look at that and try to find where your pond comes in on that so that you know what your maximum ammonia level is. And you might want to reduce your pH if you're thinking your ammonia is getting that a bit higher and stuff like that. Uh, it's just something to think about to manage your pH a bit better. So this part's going to be the nitrite test. So here we have the powder region for nitrite and I filled that up with pond water now it goes in here and you zero it zero then you put your region in so this is the bit that I find really difficult I've never been good at these powder ones I'd much rather the liquid ones Quick shake. 
Good stuff. So, a bit about this tester. This tester is really good, it's really accurate, really expensive. It is something that you need if you really want to monitor them really low levels of ammonia. But for everything else, and there are different versions of test kits for, uh, like what I showed earlier, um, that have different accuracy readings, but for everything you can basically get away with using them. And they're a good starter point, they're cheap, uh, they're easy to get, and um, they're a good guideline. Whether something like this is, you know, incredibly accurate and incredibly useful uh, sometimes, but I found that now I know what I can predict the levels are going to be. I don't use it as much as I ought to do. So what we'll do is we'll let that timer time down. So a result of 0 0.09 is actually quite a good result for this pond uh, and what I would expect as even though the ammonia is a bit high. So as your filtration turns the ammonia into nitrite, the nitrite might rise a little bit. Um, so if you've got high ammonia levels one week as then your nitrite bacteria starts to process that ammonia into nitrite, you will then have high, ammonia, high nitrite levels. And nitrite works the same a similar way to ammonia where high levels of it can burn but it also depends on the pH and the temperature of your water to how it affects the koi similar to ammonia but how nitrite is different from ammonia and that is that nitrite is not quite as obviously toxic as uh, ammonia is but it also has um, the ability to suffocate your koi so a large, large quantities of nitrite in the water um, lowers the ability of the gills to process the oxygen out of the water so the koi can suffocate. So realistically the maximum level of nitrite for a koi pond would be 0.2 milligrams per litre. Anything higher than that and you would start to see issues and uh, obviously the closer to zero that you can get that the better. But with nitrite, if you trickle water in like I do, you will naturally have a better, um, a better quality, a, be a lower, better result from your nitrite because trickling it in seems to get rid of that. So this is the nitrate test. Nitrate is good to keep as low as possible because it will lower your chances of getting stuff like blanket weed and stuff like that. However, it isn't that harmful to fish. It's just good food for plants, really. Um, this pond is 3.5 milligrams per litre. So it starts to be quite harmful to fish above 50 milligrams per litre. So the nitrate in this pond is incredibly safe. And the lowness of it is one of the reasons why I never get blanket weed and I'd never get the pea soup sort of thing where you get moss and that suspended in your water and that. Also the fact that it's an indoor koi pond. But this result is that low because the um, water is always trickling in and out of the pond. So tap water is trickling in. And just by doing that it really keeps check of the nitrate and uh, struggles to get high. So, if your nitrate is high, what that basically tells me is that you do not change your water often enough and your pond is basically you know, going stagnant almost. Uh, so if you, have a, if you have a problem with blanket weed and stuff like that, check your nitrate. If it's a ridiculously high value, then you need to change your water. So there you go. That is my video on water testing. There are fish. Uh, thank you for watching it. If you've got any questions, please comment below. And I will see you in the next video.